Hello, in this uh, lab of uh, database uh, fundamentals on AWS start to start, I will be exploring about uh, this 162DF lab, uh, build and access an RDS server. So the prerequisites to this challenge lab is that please complete this 160 lab, build your own uh, database server and interact with uh, DB on an app. So let me quickly start this particular uh, exercise. So yes, I will just uh, give the prerequisites of what exactly we need to do. But before that, I would start this lab so that it will take a couple of minutes before we join the lab. So I will start the lab. <coughs> so now, uh, once you start the lab, you should see, yeah, you should see a pop-up which the lab status is in creation. Once this is done, we should be able to uh, get the notification. But meanwhile, uh, let me just go through what exactly is needed in this challenge lab. So in this challenge lab, uh, the duration is 45 minutes. What we are doing is like uh, we would be creating an RDS instance, uh, preferably MySQL, and use this RDS uh, query editor to uh, query the data. So we will be doing this particular exercise so what we are going to do in our challenge is that so with this following parameters we were going we will be shortly exploring this uh, creation of database okay so the things which we need to remember is that we are going to use development test and uh, we'll also be using this uh, maybe a t2 micro or a t3 anything so here in this store is like uh, we can go up to 100 gb but it's okay even if we have 20 or 20 plus gb uh, so things which are uh, clear, uh, which are specified is that you disable this enhanced monitoring and also maybe a backups. Purchasing options are allowed, on-demand instances are also allowed, okay, but uh, other uh, purchasing options are disabled. So once this is done, we will also be having this, uh, what we call as a Linux server and we can connect from the Linux server through your RDS server, okay. So once you uh, get into the RDS server, uh, you need to create uh, a, a table one, uh, okay, uh, to your default database, which is as, as already been created, maybe a restart, okay, and then uh, with the following, uh, okay, columns. So maybe you can insert about 10 records into this, and then later on you can create another one, which is called as a, a cloud practitioner, okay. So you have this uh, cloud practitioner uh, table also, and then we can insert five rows into that. Okay, so once you insert, you can uh, submit this uh, screenshots also for submission. And once these two tables are created, we are going to do a join, okay, with the, both the database which are being used. So once everything is done, you can uh, uh, submit a yes to confirm. So all the resources get submitted. So this is the summary of what we are going to create. But please remember, you need to complete this 160 lab in order to do this challenge lab. So still uh, the lab is in the status is in creation. Just wait for a minute's time. Okay, now the lab status is ready. So what we are going to do, just click this AWS, a pop-up will come. So here, in order to gain uh, the things you have, this uh, details also, you can, uh, needed uh, this uh, ppk key also you can download okay so download this ppk keys also which will be useful for our lab right so yes our lab is ready uh, first is that in our exercise what we are going to do is uh, we will just explore this ec2 meanwhile i'll also do what exactly i'll also uh, duplicate this session Okay, here I go to this VPC, show you the subnet information. Say VPC. Yeah, and also one more, I'll open this as RDS. Okay, here in this search, I'll do RDS. So I have one for EC2, one for VPC and one for RDS. Okay, please understand this one. We have uh, uh, the default subnets, private, public. Okay, please note down as needed.
okay what we are going to use uh, which we have already explained in the previous lab so here uh, you see this one uh, we have no database we will be launching this database as a prerequisites what we are going to do the first check first task is okay what we are going to do is this we will create a, uh, a security group okay the security group we are going to create a new security group okay so we are going to create db security group and description you can give permit access from web security group okay select this uh, vpc or you can delete this one as a uh, lab vpc okay in inbound rules just allow this uh, 33 306 port mysql right and in source you can say uh, web security group okay I create a security group. So task one is complete, and then uh, we are going to create uh, a subnet. Okay, uh, a DB subnet in uh, RDS console. Okay, the subnet groups are there. So create a DB subnet, and here I say DB. description of view group I'll give this lab VPC okay in uh, I'll see the subnets first availability zone and then uh, also take the second availability zone yes scroll down and say create or select this one which is uh, 1.0 and also here this is a 3.0 and say create all right the task 2 also has been created in this one right? now it's time for us to create our rds so here go to the dashboard of rds create a database so here i select this uh, mysql you can even use my aurora also uh, I'm using this development test. The database instance identifier is, uh, I'll say, lab db. I wrote down these things in uh, Notepad. So master user name is main password. I use this lab hyper PSWRD. Okay. So I'll remove this admin and use main. And master password is LV lab hyphen password. Okay. So here I use burstable class. I mean p2 dot small. I can use so now. So allocated store is 100 GB. You can use see the prerequisites. So now as I see here, you can use either of these two development test I have chosen. Avoid creating a standby instance. Okay, you don't want standby instance. DB instance size is burstable. I have taken right. Choose uh, general purpose SSD up to 100 GB. That's allowed in this lab. Use lab VPC and security group. Include a security group that will allow. Yes, we are doing that. Uh, only additional configuration uh, disable this option. If you want to, yes, you can use 100 GB. It's okay. You can see this one 100. So, yeah, in the private cloud, uh, VPC, lab VPC, select that lab VPC. Public access, no. Uh, 
security group use this uh, yeah here in additional configuration 3306 is there password authentication see this one uh, database name let's say yes, lab okay and also I will use that lab okay scroll down I'll disable this backups and also uh, disable this one this is mandatory not required it's okay but yeah once all these things are done yes what you can do is that you can create your database use the new device select standard create mysql development maybe we use the single db no standby this is a uh, Mandate requirement. You can see here. So you see this. I will avoid creating a standby instance. Okay. So choose only single DB instance. Rest all are okay. Rest all are. Okay. Scroll down. Master. Rest of it. Keep it small. Which has two CPU and the cores. So once you give the options, you, your database should be triggered uh, with MySQL instance. This should take a couple of minutes of time with all the default options. Ensure that a uh, couple of things like that standby instance should not be created. And uh, choose 52 micro, that should be enough for us. And select your availability zone also. Meanwhile, let us select this uh, web server. Yes, you can see this. Uh, we have a public address. Let me inspect the security group. You see this? We have HTTP uh, and uh, this is allowed. We need to uh, add, edit this inbound rule to allow uh, even port SQL. MySQL should also be allowed to this instance. Let's select this uh, DB security group also along with this. And save rules. Yeah, right. This should be your public address. Meanwhile, uh, let me connect to this uh, RDS, uh, I mean web server. This is my public IP. I log on to Putty. Log on. Okay. You say in connections, I'll make it as 30. And provide the keys. Browse. Say log. Yep. I'm able to connect. Log in as easy to open user. Yeah. So I can say sudo su hyphen and vm update hyphen y yeah no packages and you can say vm list mysql you can uh, verify if there is uh, mysql So uh, meanwhile, let us also configure our uh, uh, what we call as uh, before this database is getting ready, MySQL client on our workstation uh, on our web server. So what we need to do, there is a hint given here, uh, MySQL client to connect. So the documentation is available. I am just opening into the space. Okay. So how you need to do? Yeah, you need to install this MariaDB. Just get all these things done so i already logged in i'll do one by one uh, ensure that you are in uh, hash prompt otherwise uh, uh, just say sudo for it if you have install my uh, db yeah and say why so it is installing so if you are using deb based then this is the one so now you should uh, see this mysql version should function 
responsible for item version should display. Yes, it is displayed. And also your manual also is should function man MySQL. Earlier, which was not functioning, now it's functioning. So now just let us wait till we get uh, connected uh, to this database. Yeah, it is now successfully created. You see this one. Once it is created, what we can do is it copy the endpoint. This is our endpoint. Okay. Please use this endpoint. Okay, uh, I have my endpoint. Let me uh, connect to this uh, database from our website. So what I do, MySQL like this. This is the command MySQL hyphen u username is main hyphen key password it will prompt you hyphen hyphen host should be this long one and fine. Okay. So yes, let me verify by connecting to this database. Right. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Show databases. We should have this uh, DB uh, lab. Okay, yes, this is created lab. Okay, now uh, let me just show you what is our requirements. So we need to create uh, uh, this is done, point number 10, uh, a table restart, and then we need to uh, with the following. Uh, data in the tables okay and uh, we need to also insert uh, 10 sample rows so here what i have done is i already created some uh, i'll be creating a database a table a restart okay uh, with the following syntax see here the student id with the following student id is a number i took as an integer not null uh, student name please uh, remember student name uh, Will be there it uh, will be varchar kernel and of course restart city character that is 25 uh, graduation date is a date time which is mentioned here so i'll use this one and create the table okay forgot to add one more lab use this uh, database data is changed and now we need to provide yeah yeah so that is now we need to add uh, insert about 10 rows 10 sample rows into this table so i do this one i have created some data you can see this particular one in this format so I insert this data in this particular format one by one. Okay, so here insert into uh, this is the database name restart. Okay, uh, the correct syntax uh, for uh, getting into uh, adding the records is insert into restart values. Uh, the same one. So I'll add one by one. Here, what I have done is that, yes, I have tried and also you can use this delete command if any time you want to uh, delete any records, okay, uh, where you can use the condition and say where. So now, what I do, insert into restart, this is the syntax, uh, where you can give this provider. Right, so one affected, so you can see this. And you can ask, you can see the select asterisk from uh, uh, restart to view the first uh, record which you have inserted. Yes. Similarly, what I'm going to do, I'm going to insert uh, more records by this particular one. Maybe. You can see the data is here. It should be year, month, and uh, day. Okay. 
okay i'm leaving comma and the time is over yep similarly i'll finish off the other 10 so in this way i'm trying to add all the records 10 records okay so you can say select start caps yeah you can see all the 10 records which has been uh, successfully added into the table right so uh, yeah this is my uh, table and i will also create another table for our requirement so what i do is uh, for cloud practitioner see here uh, one thing which we need to know is this the primary key is student id here and also uh, yeah you can see here primary key student id while creation of this uh, database see while uh, creating this uh, cloud practitioner we need to define the foreign key so this will be the foreign key or yeah second one this will be the foreign key and this will be the primary key we need to define the reference okay so i'm just going to create copy use you have this is my database yes sorry okay uh, the table is created you can see So, what you can do is uh, uh, no, the data needs to be added. So, what I do to create the data. I use this uh, insert. Then I use insert into cloud practitioner, the student ID as well as the certification date. So I copy a sample. Okay. Yes, similarly, I need to add the other data also. But remember to take screenshots as needed. So that needs to be a part of your exercise. So I added uh, five records. 